have everyone. I'll call to order the Green Mountain Care Board's hearing of October 30th. Um, we have one substantive agenda item today, which is in a head model update. And there may be um, another executive session to discuss the confidential negotiations that have been going on on the AHEAD model. Um, we had noticed um, a request from Springfield, Mount Escutney, Northeastern, and Southwestern Vermont uh, relating to condition B of the budget order. Uh, some board members had some additional questions and some issues popped up that we wanted to drill down on a little bit further. And so we've removed that agenda item for today and we will put it on the calendar, uh, I think probably sometime in the next week or so. Um, and I think we'll probably have a question or two that goes back to, um, to the hospitals on that issue. So we'll just deal with the ahead update today. Um, first, we have uh, the meeting minutes from October 16th, 2024, and I will move for approval of those meeting minutes. I can second. And all in favor of approval, please say aye. 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 And the meeting minutes are approved. And with that, I will turn it to um, Pat Jones, who is the Project and Operations Director at DIVA from the Agency of Human Services and uh, Michelle Degree. Pat, nice to have you back. We haven't had you in a while, so it's good to see you um, back. Thank you, Chair Foster. Um, and I'll provide a very brief update. Uh, we have learned from the Center for Medicare and Medicaid Innovation that they are not ready um, for the term sheet that we've uh, been negotiating for the um, past few weeks um, to be public. and so. Um, there will be a delay in making that public. They informed the Green Mountain Care Board and AHS of that um, within the last week. Pat, do you have a sense of how long it might be? I don't think it's going to be terribly long, but um, I, I wouldn't want to predict. Um, I think, you know, We'll, we'll see where we get in the next uh, week or so. Yeah. Thank you. Mm -hmm. And I would welcome others who were part of that discussion to jump in as well. If, if the chair wishes. <laughs> Any other comments or thoughts on that? I would agree, Pat. I don't think we had a, a received really a concrete date from them um, based on their internal processes, but doing everything we can to get it to the place that it can be shared uh, publicly as soon as possible. Okay, great. Thank you. Uh, with that, I do have slides, but they are simply motion for executive session. Uh, we do have the a, a few changes that we could discuss with the board. Um, I just want to confirm that you all can see my screen. Yes. Yep. These are the same slides as uh, last week. I do want to note that earlier this week, it was um, made public that uh, Rhode Island and a subset of New York State uh, has been accepted into cohort three of the AHEAD model. So now there's all three sort of cohort selections have been made um, representing six states or substate regions. Um, with that, I'll just uh, remind folks of the kind of rules for executive session, and then I've got uh, the same motion language as last week. That's all I have for you, Chair Foster. I'll go ahead and make the motion. Um, similar to last uh, couple of weeks, I think it was, um, I move we find the premature, premature general public knowledge regarding negotiation of state agreement proposals would clearly place the board at a substantial disadvantage in future negotiations of contracts with CMS that includes those items. I will second. All in favor say aye. 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 The first motion carries, um, and I also move 
that we enter into executive session to consider negotiation of state agreement proposals under the provisions of 1 VSA section 313 A1A of the Vermont statutes. Attendance at the executive session will be the board members, board staff working on the agreement with, a, with CMS, the healthcare advocate, the state's director of healthcare reform, and other staff and contractors from the Agency of Human Services working on the agreement. I'll second. All in favor say aye. 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 And the motion carries. Um, and as with before, um, uh, the healthcare advocate is not a party to the uh, agreement or the negotiations. And so, Mr. Fisher, I'll just ask that you'll again confirm that you'll maintain the confidentiality of any discussions in the executive session. Yeah, absolutely, Mr. Chair. I, I don't know if it works to say this, but uh, the healthcare advocate agrees to keep confidential anything that's discussed in this confidential hearing or future confidential hearings. Wonderful. Thank you very much. So we will um, take a break from this session. The board, AHS and HCA will move into executive session and um, we'll return. I presume it'll be about two hours or so. Um, I see Ms. Wasserman's hand for a public comment. Ms. Wasserman. Um, Julie Wasserman, Julie, are you there? Yes, I am. Thank you. Um, my understanding from previous AHEAD hearings, it was that today was going to be, this morning, was going to be devoted in part to public comment. And um, I prepared public, public comment. And it's quite possible others have too, because at the last meeting, it, 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 today was featured as a day for public comment. So I'm hoping that we could do that now as opposed to waiting for two hours and not knowing actually when the executive session would end. I think that is a wise proposal. Um, as we had originally understood that we were gonna be able to reveal the term sheet today, but given the change with CMS, we weren't able to, which is why this kind of got a little bit changed. Nonetheless, I definitely want the public comment. And so if you or others are ready, uh, happy to take it now. Um, okay, I guess I'll go first. Um, so, uh, uh, the AHEAD model, uh, in my view, is not a good fit for Vermont. AHEAD does not address our most pressing problems, and it will distract us from doing so. All the while, we are watching a uh, little by little our healthcare system crumble. AHEAD does not address affordability, access, wait times, or the severe shortage of primary care physicians. Our primary care physicians are declining in numbers, they're burnt out and they are rapidly aging. One third of our primary care physicians are over 60 years old, over 60 years old. One third of our primary care physicians are over 60 years old. This is an alarming fact. And yet AHEAD does not address recruitment or retention of primary physicians primary care physicians, nor does it address recruitment and retention of other practitioners that are, as we know, are in very short supply. AHEAD does not address the recent loss of an FQHC, and it does not address the precarious stability of other FQHCs. AHEAD does allow for additional Medicare payments to primary care providers uh, however, it provides absolutely no relief to pediatric practices or practices that serve primarily Medicaid and commercially insured individuals. And these additional Medicare payments uh, will not cover one third of our Medicare beneficiaries. One third of our Medicare beneficiaries in Vermont are in Medicare Advantage commercial plans. So they won't be covered by this, uh, the, this, these investments. Also, 
these additional payments are not available to the primary care physicians who are employed by hospitals who choose not to participate in a head. So we must ask ourselves, how valuable are AHEAD's primary care investment Medicare payments? If there is a declining and dwindling supply of primary care physicians to take advantage of these investments, and the payments only apply to a minority of Vermonters. But regardless, these investments will largely benefit hospitals because as we know, hospitals own the majority of Vermont's primary care practices. I understand that Vermont is negotiating for additional Medicare funding in these executive sessions. And uh, I wanna ask, will, the, will, these, will this, these additional Medicare funds also primarily benefit the hospitals? When will we stop pouring money into the hospitals? Especially when there's no guarantee that commercial prices will fall as a result of increased Medicare investments. So in terms of uh, other things AHEAD does not address, it doesn't address our severe shortage of community, uh, of, uh, community mental health services, substance use of substance use services, or uh, our insufficient home health services. We have insufficient and severe, we have severe shortage of community mental health, substance use, and home health. Uh, and AHEAD does not address that. And it seems to me that we first, primarily and initially, need to develop a robust community-based system if we really want to curtail unnecessary hospital spending, which by the way, is the primary intent of AHEAD. Robust community-based services need to exist pr prior to AHEAD and prior to hospital global budgets. So in terms of affordability, AHEAD's total cost of care caps will not improve affordability because there's no direct connection between the caps, the total cost of care caps, and lower health insurance premiums, lower deductibles, co-pays, the whole works. So the former of caps in no way ensures uh, the latter of lower costs for Vermonters. I've named um, a number of things that Vermont does not do. Here are some things that it does do. AHEAD mistakenly focuses on overutilization when Vermont faces an underutilization problem due to lack of access and high costs. AHEAD embeds our failed ACO, OneCare. And by the way, OneCare's involvement in AHEAD doubles spending on administrative functions doubles spending on administrative functions. Um, the AHEAD model is administratively complex and, compo and <clears throat> imposes considerable administrative burdens on both the state as well as any participating entities. Uh, as you heard from the Mathematica presentations earlier this year, AHEAD requires routine adjustments uh, for upwards of maybe 20 convoluted domains. Um, and th it, making, it makes this initiative both onerous and mind boggling. <clears throat> Furthermore, the AHEAD model promises to increase fragmentation of our healthcare system. If not all hospitals, all insurers, and not, if not all providers participate. So the AHEAD model, as you know, has multiple payer-specific hospital budget caps. There's one for Medicare, there's another one for Medicaid, and then there's a separate one for a delayed commercial budget cap. So three, three different uh, hospital budget caps. Uh, 
which encourage a disjointed, non-aligned, and very complicated approach to controlling hospital costs. More than half, it's in terms of participation, more than half of Vermont's hospitals are critical access hospitals who may not want to participate since they will lose their cost-based Medicare reimbursement. In terms of HES global budgets, um, they lock in historically high hospital costs, high prices, extraneous costs, avoidable hospital care, and unnecessary ER utilization, because as you know, AHEAD uses current and historical hospital spending as the baseline. We're locking it all in. Uh, and high hospital costs are the result of high prices. Uh, if we hope to address rising costs in hospitals, as AHEAD is, att is attempting, uh, we need to standardize prices prior to the development of global budgets. And in terms of access, ahead spending caps could actually reduce access. And one example, as we've talked about, is that the caps could disincentivize hospitals who own the majority of primary care practices. It could disincentivize them from expanding needed primary care services since costs will rise due to pent up demand for primary care. Uh, AHEAD excludes, as I've already mentioned, one third of Vermont's Medicare beneficiaries. So that, so that means that because they're covered by the Medicare Advantage um, plans. Uh, and so this results, this could result in a potentially low number of Medicare participants being served by the AHEAD initiative. Additionally, there are high numbers of Vermonters who are self-insured and would also be outside the model. Uh, that's because almost a quarter of Vermonters are, self, are, are in self-funded employer plans. <clears throat> also like to remind you uh, that, that the Green Mountain Care Board had a provider roundtable on AHEAD back in May. Uh, please recall that not a single person or provider organization endorsed AHEAD. Uh, instead, the providers voiced concerns about its complexity, cognitive overload, uh, resulting from these different budgets for different payers. Uh, and they used words like cumbersome, divisive, disruptive, and increased administrative burden. And there were some providers at that roundtable discussion who actually cautioned that AHEAD could make healthcare less affordable and harder to access. And with people who have costly illnesses, there is the fear that AHEAD's hospital budget caps could actually undermine their delivery of services. But I'd like to mention that most importantly, one of the most serious concerns is that the AHEAD model could inadvertently undermine the Green Mountain Care Board's regulatory authority. So I find it somewhat inconceivable that Vermont would commit to a nine year untested initiative without a more thorough analysis of AHEAD's costs and effect on Vermont. The outcomes are unknown, and the unintended and the potential for unintended consequences is substantial. So, in conclusion, the AHEAD model ignores Vermont's most urgent problems and will, and will consume precious time and resources that we could better spend addressing our most salient challenges. And I believe that we need to explore alternatives to AHEAD in order to address the problems that we are facing. As I said in the beginning, as we slowly, as we watch our healthcare system slowly start to crumble. 
Thank you for the opportunity to uh, comment and I will be submitting my comments uh, to you along with the provider roundtable discussion, uh, a summary of the provider roundtable discussion. Thank you. Thank you very much, Ms. Wasserman. Um, those are really thoughtful comments and I was going to ask you to mail them or email them to us if you could, so I appreciate you doing that. Um, I'm not going to respond to every public comment, but I, I had one thought that came up. A lot of your points, I think I completely agree with. There's a lot of diligence that's needed before you do any endeavor, whether it's rate setting, reference-based pricing, hospital budget, whatever it is, it takes diligence because there are so many concerns. Um, some of the things you mentioned, I think, are things that are very prescient to us as we negotiate one and also as we try and implement, right? So um, the affordability component that you mentioned or the stenting of care risk that a global budget um, has, those are all things that we need to make sure we're thinking about in the analysis, the negotiation, and also the implementation. Um, a good reform that isn't implemented well will not be a good reform. So these comments really help us make sure that we're negotiating, evaluating, and implementing if the state chooses to go forward um, with those points in mind. So thank you and thank everyone for, for raising them because they help us make sure we do those three functions properly. Um, Ms. Thank Oxfeld. You. Yeah. Thank you. Hi. Yes, hi. I won't um, repeat any of the excellent points which uh, Julie made, but just make a few extra ones. Um, I am, as a member of the public, very concerned about us moving ahead with this AHEAD model. I think this new CMS AHEAD program, it moves ahead in the same way that Medicare Advantage is an advantage, and that's the name only. AHEAD would essentially piggyback, as I understand it, on the all-payer program that has already been in place for several years in Vermont. And like all CMS experiments to date, AHEAD blames healthcare woes on fee-for-service. It insists that some form of managed care, and make no mistake, it's a form of managed care, which is called value-based care, is the solution. Now, these solutions have been tried, been tried and have failed repeatedly. You can look at the history of managed care. It's dismal. And if we embrace it once again, we're not going to make progress. Now, this idea that fee-for-service is our main problem is that the idea is that it induces providers to over-treat and to order too many tests, and that's not supported by the evidence. In fact, unlike the United States, most other wealthy nations have some kind of obviously national health plan, but many utilize fee-for-service for at least some portion of their care. And all of them manage to provide their people with universal health care at far lower per capita cost than we have. And thus, if fee-for-service was the critical problem, why wouldn't they have higher costs and you know, less access? Now, we all know an enormous reason for our high health care costs is the excessive administrative costs of our multi-payer system. And that's not to mention the additional administrative costs of experiments such as the all-payer model. Over a third of our health care costs and dollars do not go to health care. They go to the admin of managing our health care, you know, insurance companies, other profit seekers, all the people that have to go back and forth on the claims. And this is enormous administrative complexity. Now, these are ex excess costs are unnecessary, obviously, in the publicly financed system, which is why our 2014 report on financing and implementing Act 48 concluded that it would yield savings of $378 million over the first five years, which I find interesting because the Oliver Wyman report said, oh, we'll save $400 million. But, you know, we already had a report like 10 years ago that said we could save almost the same amount if we implemented publicly financed health care for all. Now, finally, um, the AHEAD model anticipates, and this part really concerns me, moving forward with a global budget approach to hospitals. And I think global budgets are a wonderful idea. And you can envision a global budget like they have in many other countries if you have some kind of single spigot or single payer system where a single payer has some real negotiating power with the hospitals. But I find it very hard to understand how you're going to get a real global budget system um, administrated in a simple way in our multi-payer system as it is now, unless we actually do implement Act 
48 and create some kind of single spigot or at least just you know publicly financed and maybe add Medicare or Medicaid. But um, it's likely that trying to create such a global budget in the current system will end up creating these Byzantine involutions rather than simplifying administration, which is why your discussions get more and more Byzantine. And I'm, you know, I don't think um, I, I'm an, a person who cannot understand complexity, but you can see how complex this is all going to get. And I don't see how all this complexity can contain costs. And that's what they found because the um, value-based care models, recently the Congressional Budget Office has studied them and it found that value-based care experiments have actually cost billions of dollars rather than save money. So here we go again, you know, down this, this imaginary rabbit hole of we're gonna save money. And I really worry in 10 years, people will have less access we will have created a whole bunch of more Byzantine involutions based on an erroneous assumption that the problem is fee for service and we won't be getting anywhere. I think our legislature and the Green Mountain Care Board, instead of moving forward with a new layer of administrative complexity um, and on adding that on top of our already administrative com administratively cumbersome ACO model, we should go back to finding a path to implement Act 48. That's Vermont's landmark healthcare legislation. It set up a roadmap to universal publicly financed healthcare. We can do it in chunks. We could start with universal primary care, which would address many of the problems that Julie was just enumerating. If you have a single spigot for primary care providers, you can negotiate a fair rate um, that's sustainable. And also your primary care providers don't have to join a big hospital system. They can hang out their you know, shingle anywhere and we'd probably be helping to save primary care in Vermont with that. So um, I would end by saying Green Mountain, the Green Mountain Care Board was created by Act 48 and part of its intended purpose was the implementation of this vision of healthcare as a public good for all Vermonters. And we need to return to this more roadmap it has a much better chance of making healthcare more accessible and affordable than really these Byzantine schemes like the AHEAD model, which are on top of the ACO model um, and based on erroneous assumptions. I really worry how many more doomed experiments, how much more wasted money we're going to indulge in. And then nonetheless, we're gonna still be less with the outrageous amount of money we waste now on administering you know, an insane commercial insurance system and complex experiments like ahead. So um, at the very least, I worry about this model. It's, it's, as Julie said, nine years down the road, if you're basing it on erroneous assumptions, you're adding more complexity, you're not dealing with some of the fundamental problems, not to mention, you know, issues of monopoly, which add to our costs as well. Um, I, I think it, you know, if it were a two year experiment, maybe I'd feel differently, but nine years is, is quite a commitment and I think it will take us in the wrong direction. So thank you very much. Thank you, Ms. Oxfeld. Um, nice to see you. Um, yeah. Mr. Mr. Flood. Uh, good morning. <clears throat> I'm leaving my camera off because I'm having internet uh, problems. Can you hear me all right? Yes, sir. Okay, thank you very much. I can hardly add much to what Julie Wasserman laid out, uh, which was a very detailed critique uh, that hit on an awful lot of important points. I do want to add a few comments. Um, for the past eight years, the state has slogged through trying to implement the all-payer model uh, with the ACO. And in my opinion, we have absolutely nothing to show for it after eight years. I think as uh, Ellen just said, here we go again. We're about to sign on to another uh, proposal that could last for up to nine years. And I predict that at the end of it, we will not have anything to show for it for all the reasons that Julie Wasserman laid out. We know what to do. The board members know what to do. You've taken tremendous amounts of testimony. We have the Oliver Wyman report, which for whatever its failings, finally addresses the fundamental issue in healthcare in Vermont, which is that we need to restructure and find a different way to fund our hospitals. I believe that the head model will be a huge distraction in trying to get that work done. 
I don't see how the state can do both. Try to implement the Oliver Wyman report and and implement uh, the AHEAD model. I, I just don't see how it's possible without spending a tremendous amount of money and a tremendous amount of time. I, I really think it's a distraction at best. It may actually be a diversion. I'm cynical enough after watching this for eight years to say that I think the administration is choosing to adopt the AHEAD model so that it can say it's actually doing something about healthcare reform without actually doing anything. Because it, won't, it will not achieve the goals that we all know need to be achieved. Um, and so I think it's a, it's a cagey diversion. Do this, and then you won't be able to do the real work that needs to be done. And I realize that's very cynical, but after watching this for so long, I, <laughs> I don't know what else to believe. So I just want to repeat, we know what needs to be done. We know that we need to deal with our hospitals differently. We know we need to strengthen primary care. We know we need to address the mental health issues in this state. And this AHEAD model really doesn't do any of those things. So as you go into your negotiations, I hope you're negotiating to just end this uh, false solution and, and get down to the real business of what we need to do. Thank you for the time to comment. Thank you very much, Mr. Flood. Um, any other public comment? Okay. Um, I'm sure people will, when they are ready, submit additional public comment on this, and we look forward to that. I see there's hospital executives, insurance folks, hospital association people. And um, we really appreciate people being very engaged. Uh, we received a number of good public comments throughout our process here, and we uh, look forward to you continuing to give us feedback and thoughts so that we can do this evaluation and potential implementation and negotiation as, as well as we can. So thank you for doing that. If there's no other public comment at this time, um, we will take a break and adjourn this session and come back um, after the executive session. And Ms. Wasserman, thank you for flagging, um, taking comment now so that people didn't have to wait. I appreciate you doing that. Um, thank you. So the folks going to the executive session, we'll see you there um, in five minutes. Thank you. Okay, we can resume uh, the public portion of today's hearing. We had noticed public comment for after. Um, I had taken it before, but since it's noticed for after, I will again open up public comment. If there is any of you, raise the hand. Seeing none, any new or old business for the board? And I will move to adjourn. Second. All in favor say aye. 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 We are adjourned. Everyone have a nice day. Bye.